Hello, welcome back to the sideboard here at StarCityGames.com Open Series in Milwaukee. We are at the Standard Open. Five, round five is going on right now, and I'm with Evan Moran, who is 5-0, with this deck he's calling Prime Speaker Bug. Yeah. How did you come to this deck? Um, honestly, I just like Bug. Like, that was really the only reason I played it. Like, I started playing in Gate Crash, and the first deck I picked up was Zagana with, like, Master Biomancer, Corpse Jack Minutes, a bunch of bad stuff, but... <laughs> Bug was always my favorite thing to do. And then uh, Theros comes out and Patrick Chapin releases a bug list. And I'm thinking, oh, this is awesome. So I made my own little changes to it over time. Uh, like, these used to be Desecration Demons, other stuff. But uh, it's evolved into pretty much what Yes. Now, of course, you're a Jeff Hoagland fan. Yes. And a uh, brewer with him. You have some cards here signed by him. Yes. And, uh, you know, this is something right up his alley, the Prognosis Sphinx with the course of crucifix interactions, all that. Yeah. You know, what the, the the thing that's interesting here are the four ofs with the Reaper, and then the three of Kiora and the two Prophet of Crucifix. Explain to me how you came to these numbers on those specific cards. Uh, Prophet of Crucifix was uh, I played three course of crucifix, whereas like I like it's it's fine if I draw multiple copies of it. Uh, Prophet of Crucifix is just abysmal if you draw multiple copies. Like it just does nothing. Reaper is just consistent damage right there. Like, a 4-5 with that scries and gives Death Touch and X-Proof. Like, I know a lot of people hate on it and say it's not very good, but I think it's awesome. Like, it's just such a good card. And the 3 Kiora was, um, was an adaption I made when the Monsters deck started to become more popular. Uh, I used to play 4 Jace Architect of Thought, actually. And um, Jace just wasn't, doing, wasn't pulling its weight against those... Uh, uh, big creature decks where I could just fog one of them with Kiora. Yeah, that's interesting. You see a lot of bug lists running Jace. You don't have any Jace in the main board. You have the Kioras instead because you're opting for fogging certain targets rather than blanking big amounts of targets. Correct. I'll fog one guy and then just use removal on another one. You have enough spot removal to kind of stay ahead so you don't need the plus one on the Jace Architect thought. Correct. Now you've played a bunch of Blue Devotion decks, some burn and some red decks and green white. How good is this deck against the control decks? Um, it's pretty good against the control decks if the sideboard is uh, uh, very uh, tuned to do that. Uh, we'll Kiora, touch on that in a second. Yeah. Uh, Kiora is Kiora, Sphinx, and uh, Reaper of the Wilds are all great against uh, control because right. they have to remove Kiora or else it's going to ultimate and they're going to get Krakens in their face. Yes. And Reaper can't be Reaper and Prognostic Sphinx can't be removed except by Verdict. And uh, I still have protection against board wipes as well, so they just have no way to remove all of my threats. On top of that, you have three copies of Thought Seized, you know, take a card out of their hand, a verdict or whatever against the control decks. And obviously the deck's called Prime Speaker Bug. You have two copies. I saw them just pull you out of a, da a game where it looked like you had no chance against green-white aggro. I was and you chained two of them together to just draw plenty of cards and answer everything you had. Yeah. How great has that card been this weekend? Um, it's been pretty good. Like, every time it's hit the board, it's... I think every time that I've successfully cast it, I've won. That's a, those games. a pretty good rate. Yeah, so, uh, win rate with her is high. Uh, she just does everything you need to do. It puts up a big blocker. It can even attack for a lot, and it just draws you cards, gets you more removal, more gas, everything you need. Another thing, uh, no Pelucranos World Eater in this deck. Not a fan, don't need the 4-drop. Not really a fan, and kind of both reasons. I'm not really a fan. I don't need the 4-drop. Uh, he's kind of just... I mean, he's a 4-mana 5-5, five five, but, like, I'd rather have a Reaper in my hand, and I'd rather have a Prognostic Sphinx in my hand. Right. I always felt like I, when I would scry, I would always scry him to the bottom, because I'm like, I could get, I could be better than that. And, of course, you have Chain of uh, Removal Spells, Heroes Downfall, Abrupt Decay, you know, two main deck Golgari Charms helps against the Swarms, mm -hmm. and protects against Wraths. One, Scavenging Ooze. How good is, uh, you know... Is I see a lot of people moving into two or three or four of that card mm -hmm. to fight off all the burn and stuff like that. You only have one copy. Uh, yeah. Um, Corsair provided a good enough source of life gain where scavenging use was just not very good, and a lot of times I'd be wanting to spend my mana on playing removal spells anyway. And um, he really, to me, he just looks like a big five drop. Like he's only really good late game. Seeing him in my hand in my in my opening hand is not very pleasing because I'd rather just be casting removal. Right. Now let's look at the sideboard. You have a couple pretty interesting cards here. You had a couple copies of Gaze of Granite. 
Yes. That's another car that, you know, when spoiled, everybody was like pretty interested in, but hasn't really found a place or it's been too slow. Where have you been using it? Um, I mean, it's good against, it's even good against control because there'll be times when they have like three detention spheres and I'll put it on three and then just get all my stuff back against aggro. I can put it on two, just wipe their whole board. That's how I beat uh, Mono Red was. Okay. Uh, I actually won multiple games just from Gaze of Granite and then being able to swing through. Uh, it just, it also just clears enchantments too. It doesn't even have to be creatures. It's a, it's like a merciless, it's like a green black merciless eviction. It does everything it needs to do. You've got one uh, primeval bounty. Yes. I slipped on the name because you don't see that often, but it's mm -hmm. been like one the one ofs in a lot of Jun decks or those mid range decks. Mm -hmm. Where have you been bringing that in against? Uh, I've been bringing it a lot against the other mid range decks like monsters. Uh, I actually brought it in against green white because uh, I knew we were going we were going long, but it didn't matter because we uh, it, we draw it out anyway. Right. So. Uh, it's basically just for the other uh, mon the other mid range decks that want to try and one for one with me and want to try and put pressure on me when I could just be making my guys bigger, gaining life and being able to swing profitably, and also just putting beasts into play as chump blockers and even attackers too. Yep. You've got two Jace memory adept, and you bring those in against sort of the flood the board decks or the just have big dudes against big dudes board. Yeah, a lot of times when you have like monsters versus monsters or big 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 creatures against big creatures they'll you'll get into a point where nobody wants to attack it's like okay draw go draw go when jace just changes all that you're attacking them from multiple angles yeah and while you're sitting there with all your big creatures and they have their big creatures you're just milling them out and they they start trying to put pressure on your jace then you're blocking you're uh, killing all their stuff in the process and then even swinging too so it just, it makes it really awkward. Seems like a card that can really change the tide of the game. Yes. And against control, it's also just an additional threat that they have to deal with. Yep. You've got a Whip of Erebos. Seems pretty good bringing back all of your giant creatures. Yeah. You know. Truth be told, I've actually, even like for the months that I've played Bug, I've actually never whipped back a creature. It just, it's never come up. I just use it for the life gain, and it's honestly one of the best cards in my sideboard. Because just from the life gain, like being able to swing in, uh, into monsters decks and just swing past them, gain all that life, and it doesn't even matter how much they attack, I'm just gaining so much life. Yeah. Other cards to gain you life, Farika's Cure, also good against the red decks, burn deck that has been rising in popularity. Mm -hmm. Duress, also good against burn, but also good against control. Yes. So, all of the discard, and a one of Aetherlink for yes. control matchups. Yeah, just uh, just as a catch-all for control matchups, because they'll be looking for their, they'll be looking for the Reapers and the Sphinxes, then I play Aetherlink and it's like, what does that <laughs> card do? Yeah. All right, well, you're 5-0. If you had the choice, what would you get to play against the rest of this tournament? Um, I haven't seen it a lot, but I'd like to play against uh, the White Weenie decks. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly because the main deck is so well-suited to play against them, because Golgari Charm is just almost a win con against them. Farrakis Cure is amazing against them. Uh, just, I have such a good matchup against them that that'd be great to play against them. Well, there are a couple copies floating around, so you might get lucky. Yeah. Well, Alvin, thanks for joining me here in the sideboard. Do you have any shout-outs or anything? Uh, Bridgeport Comics and Games in Chicago. It's my f and I tested with this deck with them. They didn't know everything about it. Yep. Shout-out Chicago. The oh, yeah. Jersey. They're playing tomorrow. Go Hawks. Maybe you'll be able to check them out after a nice score here tonight. Oh, yeah. So. All right. Well, thanks, Evan, for joining me on the sideboard. Stay tuned for all of the Milwaukee coverage here at StarCityGames.com.